Thank you very much. A man love, the power of unity, the power of love that brings us here today. It is my pleasure to introduce a person who I see as a total human being, a person who understands the meaning of a manla, the power of unity and the power of love, a man who ran for mayor in Chicago, a man who should be the president of this country. I want to introduce to you Dick Gregory. And we'd like to say to Brother Mel King, thank you, and to all of you, thank you very much. You know, at one time in the United States, for someone to say you should be the president uh, was a thrill and an honor. But to look around at all the mess that's going on now, anybody could be president now and it would be better than all this craziness that we've been looking at lately. The nuclear plant blows up in Three Mile Island and they, they lie to us for three days. And then to, to help the trick, President Carter and his wife goes in the plant to prove that everything's safe. And I, I thought that was a pretty good gesture if it was them. But when they said that's the president and his wife in the nuclear plant, I felt if it's so safe, how come you didn't take that little girl with you? It's like at the height of that Three Mile Island mess, they told us, well, okay, don't worry about the radiation. We got a bigger problem now. Say, what's that? Say, we worrying about this hydrogen bubble. I said, well, damn, I didn't know that was in the plan. He said, we'll know in three days. And three days later, they said, everything's cool. The hydrogen bubble disappeared. <laughs> and I keep asking the same question, where did the hydrogen go? And I don't want them to explain it to me in no Harvard, Yale, MIT, Howard University scientific mentality. I want you to explain it to me in pure, simple, great, great grandma, can't read, can't write, nigga logics. Where did the hydrogen go? I mean, you understand what I mean? I mean, you know, like, you ever blow up a balloon and then tie it and leave it on the dresser and then go out the house and come back and the balloon is flat? The air didn't disappear, it's in the room with you. So I want to know where did the hydrogen go? And lastly, let me tell you of a great experience I had last September when I was with Muhammad Ali when he was getting ready for that last fight with Leon Spinks and I was putting a little nutrition thing together for him. And the thrill of being with Ali is I got to speak with Leon Spinks. And I asked Leon a simple question. How come you can't get no driver's license? And his manager said, I'm glad you asked that. And I said, why? He said, because I want to explain to you about that drug bust with Leon Spinks in St. Louis. I said, D I, don't give me that. I mean, I cannot handle that drug bust. That boggles the human mind. And, and normally I can figure out anything. But I cannot figure out the drug bust with Leon Spinks. Have you all figured out why the president fired all his cabinet folks? Have you figured that out? That's simple. He fired all the cabinet people on Thursday, right? The biggest news that ever broke in the history of this country was on Wednesday when the Senate Select Congressional Committee said that John Fitzgerald Kennedy and Martin Luther King was killed by a conspiracy and the only way we could wipe them headlines off the face of this earth was for Carter to do what he did the next day, and it worked. So you don't have to be too smart to figure that out. I mean, out of all the things white folks have problems with, they do know how to fire folks discreetly. So like I said, I can figure all that out. What I can't figure out is that drug bust with Leon Spinks. Now, 
The St. Louis police said that Leon had the dope in his hat. Leon Spink said the white police put the dope in his hat. Now, I don't have no problems with that. Because you see, there are some white police that would put some dope in a nigga's hat. And there's some niggas that would have some dope in their hat. See, I don't have no problem with that. The problem starts, <laughs> the St. Louis police say it was $1.98 worth of cocaine and reefer. And that just blows me out. Because I don't know no self-respecting white cop that would frame a nigga with $1.85 worth of coke. And I don't know no self-respecting coke snorter that would save that small amount. I mean, think about that. I mean, think about that. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, do you realize a dollar 85 cents worth of coke has never been seen with the naked eye? Do you realize cocaine is the most expensive high on this planet? That is $85 per snort per nostril. And that's provided you got them little bitty white noses. You got them Leon Spinks gaps, you can kiss it goodbye, Jim. I mean, think about that. Leon Spinks take one good snort and he had wiped out all the cocaine in Peru. Let me say to all of you that's here for this fantastic, beautiful occasion, let me personally say thanks to you, to each and every one of you. And I can't tell you how good I feel as I stand here and look at you out there. And I just hope that when you leave here, you won't leave here just on an entertainment high, but you will leave here and take what this affair is about today because none of us on the stage have to look for another place to entertain, but we go out of our way to find people that want to come together to talk about unity, to talk about love, to talk about peace, to talk about respect for one another as human beings. And that's what this is all about today. That's what this is all about today. And that's what you here for. And that's what you are part of. And I say when you leave here, take it with you. And that's what's going to turn the world around. A sick, insane, degenerate political network around the world that's manipulated by a handful of evil, sick, slimy, degenerate men will never be any good. And there's nothing on this planet Earth that you can invent like a gun or a missile or rays or atomic energy that scare them because they can deal with all of it. The one thing they cannot deal with is what you're doing here today. There's not a Pentagon on this planet that can stop what we are about today. Because when we talk about unity and talk about love and talk about peace and talk about respect, that transcends all the things that evil people can put together. And that's what it's about. It's about South Africa, but South Africa to you should start right here within your own self. We must work. First, we got to admit that we racist. First, we got to admit that we sexist. First, we got to admit that we don't give a damn about poor people and sick people and minority people. Once we start admitting that, then we can start changing it. It's a beautiful thing for us to look to our brothers and sisters in South Africa and say, we care about you, but don't forget these Indian brothers and sisters in America who we stole this damn country for. We must care about them too. You see, 
It is so easy to love people that's a long ways away from us. But can you love yourself? Can you go back home from that house you left that wasn't unified today? And can this affair have enough effect on you to make you go back home to your apartment, to your house, to your area and work for unity? That's what it's all about, baby. That's what it's all about. Because if we cannot have unity here, it's a poor unity we're going to get for our brothers and sisters in South Africa, all over the world. I think about those people that's out in the water today. And I look at the names we calling them, boat people. And they're not boat people, they're people that's about to die. And we, the decent people on this planet, must stand up and say to the rest of them inhumane, cruel beasts that we are not going to tolerate it no more. And then they'll say, what you going to do about it? If I don't do nothing but get out of my bed every day and look myself in the face in the quietness of my living room and say, I'm not going to tolerate it no more. I'm not going to tolerate it no more. I'm not going to tolerate it no more. That alone, when enough people start doing it, is enough to win. Test, test. I say to test. you test. that we can turn this around. And I say to you that when you leave here, feel good to know that we send to the whole world that help is on the way that we are concerned about you and I say to all of these entertainers that gave up their time to be here it's, it's about more than just entertaining you when we come and see what you are doing you do something for us and I thank you and I thank you. And to all of the people with the Haymarket concert that worked and gave the energy and the love to put this together, we thank you. And as I leave you, I say to you this. I wish I could stand here today and tell you that the number one problem in this country is racism. The number one problem is sexism. I wish I could tell you the number one problem is the gap between the rich and the poor. I wish I could tell you that the number one problem is hunger. Those are all problems, but if those were the problems, we could solve them overnight. The main problem is not racism and sexism and all of that craziness. The number one problem is not them nuclear plants. The number yeah. one problem is America is morally and spiritually bankrupt. That's what the problem is. That's what the problem is. And it is our job to say to America in no uncertain terms that we're going to turn this country around. And what goes on over there in South Africa, there's no other group or nations on this planet that's more responsible for that condition than the United States of America. And as I leave you, I take great pleasure in introducing a fantastic human being, a young man that understands racism, that understands poverty, that understands all of the hurts, and he did not let that defeat him. He moved because he understands that pain is just for a few minutes and joy is definitely for a lifetime. And he set out, not just in Jamaica, but to go the world over to share this joy and to share this love and to share this great respect and to share his religion, to share his spiritual power with the whole world. And we say to you, Brother Bob, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And now I give you none other than Brother Bob Marlin and the Whalers, ladies and gentlemen.
Heal Rastafari His Imperial Majesty and Pryly Ice Lassie Eye Free Africa now Cause Africa no free I and I now go free You know what I say This is the Rastaman vibration